And usually there are more people involved in this kind of decision. So when we want to upgrade technology, how it usually works is when we start a new show, like, I don't know, for example, when we start Clash, uh, we already did water before, so we have a look to do what, what kind of work we have to do, so which one is the new challenge. And after, depending on the new challenge, we also realize if the tools that we have are going to work fine or we have to develop new technology. So there is something missing that we need to build or maybe the tool that at the moment we have works perfectly for that kind of effects, but now maybe it's, it's too slow. So in this case, uh, usually I always check this with the leads. We go through all the shows, we see which kind of effects we have to do, and after we start to identify which software we should use, that kind of effects. So sometimes when we do like big water, of course it's Froline, because we did in the past using Froline. We, we did a lot of fire for uh, the last Harry Potter, in that case it was Froline as well. Uh, we, are we are doing a lot of lumetic works, and Froline is still the software, but we are still using, of course, Maya Fluid. Depends on what kind of effects we have to do. Uh, Destruction as well. I mean, at the moment, Kali is our destruction tool. Uh, so usually, I always sit with the with the leads, with the production team, to have a look at the show. So we decide how or we think how we should do the effects. We speak with the supervisor, so to have also their their feedback. And after, it depends on what we have, which tool we have, and what we need to do in order to have the tools ready for the show. We also prioritize the task for the R&D department. So I mean, we would love to have everything done or let's say we would love to have all the show under all the all the tools in the way working perfectly 100 percent in the way we want but in general if you, if you have to decide and prioritize uh, two effects of, of course we prioritize the one that is probably heavier or the one that be, is involving more development i think at the moment one of the tricky things is the timing that you have to wait the timing to cash something to create an effects so we always, I mean, all the R&D and all the work has always been done to speed up the process of caching, create an effects. So I think the future, what we have to aim is to have like sort of, don't see, I would love to see real time effects. I think that is what we have to achieve. It's just because more time you spend during the day to wait the caches to be done, or less time, faster is the simulation, more iteration you can do during the day. And also if you have like a fast beep, fast feedback, it's, it's much easier to, to control it and to be more focused in the artistic side instead of the technical side. So I think, I mean, I think the way we are moving is to improve and speed up the, all the workflow to making the, all the steps that we have during the day much more easier so that they can be more focused in the, in the shots and to have like caching time, for example now speaking about the, the fire, would, would be great to have like I don't say real time because probably we have to wait so many years, but to have like a lot of iteration during the day. I mean, the last project we've been involved in it was very challenging was Harry Potter, the, the last one that I did in Holos. Uh, we did a lot of fire, I mean we did a lot of different kind of effects. I was involved, I was one of the leads, the, of the effects lead for the, for the fire and I spent most, most of my time doing creatures. So it was very, that, I, I think that was one of the effects most very challenging, probably was one of the most challenging effects I did until now. Uh, let's say the, the challenging things was you have to create fire, so it has to, it, it has to look like realistic fire, but it's in, in the same time you have to create like a sort of animation of a creature. So the, the spectator has to understand that it's real fire, but in the same time takes the shape of something that is animating like I don't know, a snake or like a lion or like a dragon. So the, what we did for the show was we, we got, of course, the feedback from the supervisor. So, so, so we understood what we have to do. And after we start to, to test different approaches, so we got approaches where you have more control. So you can, I don't know, bend the fire, control the fire the way you want. But after uh, every every approach got the pro and cons. So then we. The trick was to, to, to have like a right balance, so to have like artistical control of the motion of the fire. So we present to the supervisor like two or three different approaches, and after we choose the one that was working best for our for our show. So you have more artistical control, and in the same time you can have, you can also have like the right look for the motion for the motion of the fire. Yeah, it's uh, it's always I think it's always happening every show. 
you start you start in the beginning, you develop something, and after you you start to have the, the right look, maybe you get a feedback from the supervisor and say, now we have to change completely the, the look or how can we do? How can we achieve this stuff? And a lot of time happens that you say, I don't, I don't have a solution or but after is, there is always I mean that is I think that is the key things and the the challenge that makes working effects very interesting because every show, every effects is there is always something new, there is always the challenge. A lot of times we do speaking now about water, for example, we do water a lot of times in previous shows, but every time you have a new show, also if you do the same thing, it's always more challenging uh, because you're always trying to improve the look of the effects. The same for the fire. So I think the great things of working, for example, in effects is that the challenge that we have every day, 